welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Today is International Women's Day, and this is absolutely great. Here in California, the sun is shining, the birds are singing, and everything is happening. I am Lisa, your host, and today I have none other than my dearest friend and colleague and everything, uh, Chris Gota, as my co-host. Hi, Chris. Hi, Lisa. Hi, everyone. Happy International Women's Day on this beautiful day in California. Exactly. Are you in your beautiful backyard, Chris? I am in my side yard. So, uh, yes, it's the yard. <laughs> there's there's um, dogs barking and children uh, screaming and playing. So that's what you'll hear occasionally, but it's okay. It's it's a lovely part of life. <laughs> Beautiful. And how apropos you are uh, dressed in purple. And I don't have yes. anything purple except my beautiful sign that Beautiful. is all in purple. Yes. Symbol of, of justice and equality, the color of justice and equality for International Women's Day. Exactly. As we blossom to who we are. So let's talk about what is International Women's Day, where this came about, and let's talk about our external forces uh, and our internal strengths. Go ahead, take over. Take over, geez. Um, that's the, uh, a sure piece of empowerment right there. <laughs> but that's really what International Women's Day is about. It's about empowerment of women. And I guess the word empower means to be given the power and authority to do something, anything. And for a long time, women were not given the power or authority to do many things that we are capable of doing and capable of, of accomplishing. So uh, International Women's Day is in recognition of all of the strides that women have made throughout um, the different countries and, and throughout history, uh, breaking through those, uh, those biases and, and, and obstacles and continuing uh, the fight for equality and justice uh, throughout the world, places where it still exists. So uh, that's, uh, it's, an, it's an honor, first, first of all, to be a woman and to be, and, and I also have to acknowledge how lucky we are that uh, you and I, Lisa, live in a country where justice and equality is the priority, really, in people's lives, and um, the fight for it is is supported very strongly in this country by other women and men, of course. So, yeah. Exactly, and thank you for that introduction. Um, you know what. What transpired as uh, in America, they they did not celebrate this day. It is such a global thing. I know in European countries, they have been celebrating uh, International Women's Day as an Armenian. Um, I was, uh, it was years ago when I was still living in my condominium and uh, my neighbor, came with a bouquet of flowers and gifts and everything. And I'm like, what is going on? Today is not my birthday. And she said, it's International Women's Day. In our country, we celebrate this. It's bigger than Mother's Day. It's bigger than a birthday. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow. She said, the honoring of women, our matriarchs, our ancestry of women who have paved the way to be where we are today, who stood those grounds and we are walking, not in their shadows, but moving forward, taking mm -hmm. strides and moving forward. And she said it so beautifully. I was like taken back. And that was at least about nine years ago. And since oh, wow. then, we have started to recognize it. And I know in America, we started to recognize it maybe about five years ago, it became mm -hmm. such a big thing. Yes, yes. And it's, it's all really through social media, you know, that we've uh, made the world a lot smaller through social media. And you're right, we were very isolated before and um, maybe didn't recognize how difficult it was for women in other countries because we are mm -hmm. so lucky to live here and to have the opportunities we have as women here in the United States. So, you know, it, a, a lot of it is you know, when you're talking about external forces and inner, inner strength, um, 
yes, we do have that advantage that we don't have a lot of external forces, you know, uh, blocking our way and our path as women. Um, and uh, inter interestingly enough, I'm finding that as we go through, especially coming out of the pandemic, right, we are seeing a lot of um, more call for inner strength as women, mm -hmm. you know, especially, uh, you know, um, gosh, just the other day, someone on um, um, Facebook posted, one of my good friends posted how she feels guilty about self-care, right? And Lisa, you and I know, we've talked about it before, how, why do I feel, I'm one of those people, I feel guilty about self-care. I feel like it's indulgent. And, you know, I can see myself, you know, sometimes I tip towards more self-indulgence. But then again, you know, it, it's also that, I guess it's something that we've inherited as women, you know, not just in this country, but it, throughout history that somehow it's really more about uh, our job being taking care of everybody else and forgetting to take care of ourselves, right? So, and, and being kind to ourselves, which is something, a lesson that I have to learn. Even though I live in a country where I am very, uh, you know, I have justice and equality. I have a lot of support. I have a tremendous amount of support and encouragement. Uh, but, you know, those are the challenges that even women like us face in this country. So true. And yet, even this country was not as forefront that we are right now, because I remember years ago uh, that even women did not have the right. So, uh, so that equality has evolved throughout the years, but when we talk about strength and outside forces, uh, women have, women are in the combats, women are in the front lines, women are uh, fighting a war even today during war, women are there not only as nurses and caretakers, but they are in the front lines and uh, part of the army, part of the forces, fighting for their country, for their right, for their people, for their community. So when we think about a woman as a nurturer, the hub that we are as a nurturer and caretaker, at the same time, we have so much strength. So where does that strength, what do you believe our strength comes from? Is it nurtured? Is it taught? Let's have a talk about that. Oh, wow. Sure. Yeah, I would say, um, you know, uh, a lot of it is taught and, you know, and, and living in the modern age as a woman, our, our educators, when it comes to women, you know, come from many different places, not just our, our nuclear family and our extended family, but from the media as well. So I would say for me, especially, you know, a, a huge portion of that um, education and, and teaching that I got on where, where a woman you know, um, can go where a woman should be, all of those things. A lot of it came from my mom and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the community that we were in, which was, you know, um, not necessarily um, a, you know, female oriented or, or uh, you know, a, a women support, um, a, a very supportive place for women, not necessarily. So we kind of had to fight for it. My, I, I saw my mom fight for a lot of things that she could, you know, position in, in companies and, and in community organizations um, that were normally relegated to men that were, you know, of her same intelligence and so forth. But, you know, women weren't expected to speak out, for instance, right. you know, so um, and then, of course, you know, all of the classical things that we learned from media and books, you know, I'm a huge Jane Austen fan. And anyone who's read Jane Austen, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's comical. Her writing is comical because how funny it is that women at some, at one point in history couldn't earn money. We couldn't inherit money. We couldn't make money. So it was just an, an interesting, and to her, it was funny. And she, she kind of called out all of these, these um, injustices in a funny way through her books. But, you know, uh, we find ourselves kind of still working through a lot of those biases and this year, right, 2022 is all about breaking the bias. So, yes. you know, I think it continues, you know, teaching ourselves and our children, our, our sons, as well as our daughters, that um, uh, we can break the bias in, in all sorts of different ways. You know, on, uh, on the big stage when we're, we're speaking out against injustice, as well as, uh, you know, breaking the bias at home, you know. Exactly. And that's actually what a beautiful, this is a great segue to reminding everyone that's what 3E 
the event that I put together, Empowering Women, is all about that, evoking what was, embracing what is, so we, we can evolve to the things that we want. And when you mentioned Jane Austen right there, I was thinking about Jane Fonda. <laughs> <laughs> Well, she's another Jane that's very big in international women's uh, justice and equality. So, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Not only justice and equality about strength, about stamina, standing up. I mean, coming from everywhere that she was and fighting for the justice and yet being this uh, beautiful, uh, you know, teaching us exercise, teaching us how to care for our body, how to care for ourselves, and how to be a woman, embody the essence of a womanhood, and yet speak up, stand up, show up for who you are. Absolutely. And I don't know if, if you've um, read any of her stuff lately. I don't know if she has an actual book out or if it was just excerpts that I read um, in different blogs, but um, the essence of woman is also her ability to change. And Jane Fonda definitely embodies that because she went from a very, uh, you know, strict kind of, you know, planned out motherhood with her children. And then when she became a grandmother, she kind of said, you know, all that goes out the window and it's just all about unconditional love. And, yes. and, and, and so I, I respect that she's able to stand up for her beliefs and, you know, and promote them and support other women, but at the same time, be humble enough to know that things can change, her ideas can change. And, you know, she is so, still support women who have different views on different things, so. So well put, yes. Uh, change, uh, you know, animals, they cannot change. They cannot change, uh, they cannot choose what to do. I mean, they are such creatures of habit. I mean, like when the birds and geese, they have to travel south, they travel south at a certain season. And then they, if they have to go east, they go east. I mean, it's it's conditioned. It is part of their bringing. It is only human beings. It is only us that has the power of change and choosing to make a change. Mm -hmm. So we are the only one and every single one of us, no matter what has happened in our life in the past, we do have a choice today to stand up and say, I can mm -hmm. and I choose and I can change something, whatever it is, I can change whatever it is I no longer want, but today I can make a decision and make a change in my life to the things that I want. And it can be anything. Mm -hmm. Consequences, understanding the consequences and still doing it. Absolutely right. I 100% agree. And I have to thank you, Lisa, because you have been a lot of my support when it comes to, you know, changing things that don't work for me anymore. <laughs> Through your, your uh, hypnotherapy, as well as just your, your, your friendship and, and your advice. And uh, one of the things I wanted to share also on this day is, yes, the, the ability to change something that doesn't work for me anymore. And I have anyone who knows me kind of knows me as a lecturer. You know, if, if something upsets <laughs> me or something goes wrong, I'm in there, I'm, you know, testifying to Congress because I just speak and talk and, and it's very difficult for me to just <laughs> shut it down and listen. And uh, I'm learning that, um, you know, there's the difference between what I'm saying and the energy I'm putting out. So, and of course, Lisa, you taught me this, that the energy that we put out actually sends a much stronger and more impactful message. So one of the things I, I'm kind of looking to change is to change my energy. So a lot of it is if, I, if I'm saying something and it's coming from a place of fear or it's coming from a place of anger or non-centeredness, then the, that's the message that's coming across, not necessarily the words. So maybe it, you know, um, taking time to stop talking, to listen more, to kind of center myself and maybe not respond with the answer, you know, the solution, but just more conversation. And that energy, that open energy of inclusion, you know, is I think kind of going with the theme of International Women's Day of breaking the bias because it's breaking kind of uh, people's, um, you know, general, uh, especially my family, uh, you know, opinion of me that when something goes wrong, I'm there with a lecture, I'm there with a lesson. Chris, is it their opinion or is it a perception? Um, I think it's a little bit of both. <laughs> 
because they've told me, but mom, I'm not in the mood for your lecture right now. And, you know, my kids are not little babies anymore. They're teenagers and young men. So, you know, I do have to change my energy around them if I want to be impactful and, and effective. So I'm doing that. Boy, it's a learning lesson. It's, it's hard for me as I'm set in my ways, but that's what I'm doing out of respect for the women who have come before me, changing the thing, the, the, the barriers, breaking the biases. If I can do it for myself, I can do it definitely for the world and, and, and be the peace, right? Be the peace you want to see in the world. That's right. what my, I'm hoping I, I can accomplish and get better at, you know, in my next decades. That's beautiful. I come from a family. I know you have three sons, well, four sons. And so you are surrounded with all the men and you're the only woman in your household. And I come from a household of matriarchs, which my grandmother uh, coming from the Armenian genocide and everything. And I want to say this in Armenian, International Women's Day, uh, so I just said it in Armenian. Uh, I'm learning how to do things and also speak my language, uh, speaking three languages coming from Iran. I also speak Farsi. So, you know, it's being a part of all this, uh, embracing all parts of us. Um, my matriarch, which was my grandmother, and then my mom, who was the caregiver, and sometimes even realizing, you know, not everything is perfect. Even as women, we do butt heads, and, and this uh, climate between mother and daughter and everything. Mm. And so how is it living in a household with all men, or me being in a household that women were such uh, strong characters? Mm, wow, that's a great question. <laughs> Very interesting, because I did grow up in a, my family of origin were all women. My father was the <laughs> only man. So it was a lot of female energy, which was, you know, uh, could have been quite chaotic at times. Um, but uh, interestingly enough, uh, as growing up in those two different dynamics, I could actually see how you can take love and approval and weaponize it mm. and that becomes a negative and so one of the things I've, I'm, I'm hoping to evolve out of or hopefully I have already um, to the benefit of my children is to not take my love and appreciation of my children and weaponize it the way my mother did you know with us um, sisters growing up and and you know of course those are all things that those were their maladaptations and, and trauma responses she had from her upbringing. So of course I, I see that perspective. Now my mother's no longer with us. So I have that perspective and I've definitely put her, put that in, in kind of in, in, in the spectrum or the, the lineage of love, of motherhood and love that, that um, you know, that where it belongs because of, there was that, but then there was also fierce, fierce love, you know, right. from my mother that I learned from her. So that I, I hope to pass on. So that's um, it, that's a very interesting question. So yes, uh, I can take the position of being kind of this, you know, um, force in the family since I am the only female. But at the same time, I can also take on more of, you know, being like going with the flow of the river, so that when people step in, they don't get swept off off their feet, more carried rather than you know, than pushed. So that's kind of the energy I, I, I want to bring, you know, um, into this new family, my new nuclear family where I am, you know, the only female. Oh, <laughs> so I'm, I, I'm, I may be outnumbered, but I can still carry the, the, uh, <laughs> the balance, I guess that's how you, I want to put it. <laughs> right. So we talked about the external forces and when we are talking about the internal strengths, I believe the internal strength is for us to stand up for who we are, not necessarily what our titles are, what we possess, where we live, the things we have, but who we are. Because I learned long time ago that a lot of people look at our titles, the way we are dressed. Of course, these are all attributes of how we show up in life. But it's not who we are. And uh, there are those who are constantly afraid to see the best of themselves. And 
they haven't blossomed yet. So that strength within is like, I don't know if I am good enough. And so when I work with the self-esteem, it's not so much the confidence, the self-esteem to realizing who you are is more than enough. And if you could only see yourself in the mirror and say yes to you, to all of you, every essence of you, not only your body, your strengths, your mind, your heart and everything, and peel away the, the titles, the labels that have been placed upon you or you have taken on mm-hmm. or shouldered upon and realize that you truly do matter because our existence, we don't sometimes realize and it's not spoken, but when we are missing, it's very much present. Yes, that's right. It's noticeable, You're the space that you leave. And I think that's, that's a great message, especially for young women and uh, young women that are listening to this, that, uh, you know, it, it, it's true that sometimes the things that we see about ourselves can be painful, but, you know, liter- here I am in the fifth decade of my life, and I can tell you with absolute certainty that nothing is forever. So mm. if you are not feeling completely satisfied with your hair or your weight or any, all of that can change, does change. Even if you're totally like, I'm perfect today, you won't be perfect <laughs> tomorrow. You know, two days later, there'll be something you know, going on. Um, so it, it, you know, things do change, but, but really it's about owning and, and recognizing yourself and really acknowledging that the space you take, the space you take up in this world matters. It's, it's, it's significant. It, it puts a dent in the spirit of everything around you and the people around you. And, and you have a place in history, in this epic, epic history of the world. And um, it's important Amen. You, you know, uh, you know, love yourself um, because that's, it's really, you know, the mark that you leave in this world. So, um, you know, young girls out there, hang in there. Yeah, it's not going to be perfect every day, but, um, you know, you'll look back on your life one of these days and say, wow, I did all that because you really can. You can do lots of different things. It doesn't have to be always, you're not always going to be someone's daughter. You're not always going to be someone's girlfriend. You will, you will be all those things and so much more. Exactly. I remember when I was growing up as a teenager, I used to struggle with so much um, feeling alone, feeling lonely, and yet I was surrounded with family. Mm-hmm. So there is so much that internal things, we feel hopeless at times. We feel as if nothing really matters. I am not seen. I am not heard. And I want you, if you are listening, realize that I want you to listen to your heart, to your gut. And first and foremost, believe, start one step at a time, small little steps. Nothing in life happens with this big steps that we take, achieving the goals, the big dreams. And there are those who can, and there are those who take small little steps, and that is okay, because each and every step is carving those little things that, you know what, even the diamond came from rocks, and until the time it has not been polished, and has not been carved, and has not been in the hands of the jeweler to see the worth, the beauty, the essence of that diamond, that is who you are. So you do matter. Absolutely. So I know it is time. It is coming to the end of our Heal Talk Tuesdays. I want to first and foremost say to all the women who are listening, to all the women energetically that we are like butterflies sending this prayer, this uh, gift, this butterflies of blossoming for who you are, no matter if you are in the trenches or you are in that beautiful castle, uh, no matter where you are, if you are in pain or you're having the joy of your life, 
remembering who you are and saying thank you to your body that houses you, shields you, protects you, to this beautiful sound mind of yours that it's truly can dream and be critical at the same time and your loving heart that sometimes can be very strong, but it will always blossom when you look within yourself. So Chris, I want to say thank you for your friendship, being my colleague and being my co-host at all times. And I truly value you. And uh, with that, let's talk about, take one minute to talk about the 3E event that we're going to be uh, putting together end of September. And you have attended the 3E event. How do we bring this beautiful essence of energy, collaborativeness, honoring, and gifting one another? Yes, I have. I've attended many of your three events and I spoke at one of them and it is an amazing event uh, where women get together and uh, we share each other's pains and joys and triumphs and challenges. And it's a, it's a time of growth. It's a time of, of evoking and it, it's really a, a wonderful experience. So if you have an opportunity to attend, definitely um, take some time, do it for yourself, do it for the women around you and, and, the men and women around you, because the stronger right. you are inside, the better you're able to show up for the people that you love. So, and that is something that um, Lisa has taught me to, to not feel so guilty about taking care of myself. <laughs> and, uh, you know, thank you, Lisa, for being such a constant inspiration to me and help to me. And I'm honored to be on your Heal Talk Tuesdays. It's, it's great. And uh, looking forward to 3E. I know it, it'll be in September, correct? We don't, do we have a date yet in September? Uh, it is to be announced. And I believe it's going to be a two day. It's like a retreat. And, you know, we're opening it to the other side. And it's uh, even men who are going to show up, who are going to speak and empower women. So let us bring this energy because it's not about only women. There are a lot of men who truly stand by and speak for the women. And uh, we want to also embrace them. Yeah, way to break the bias as this yes. year's International Women's Day theme is to break the bias. And I absolutely 100% believe in that. And that goes both ways to break the bias on uh, against women as well as men. So I love that. That's great. I, I'm so looking forward to 3E. So this has been and great. Until, yes. So with that, I want to say cheers with a glass of water. <laughs> Coffee. <laughs> Mine is water, but you know what? It even matches my tulips and everything. Oh, yeah. I love Perfect. the colors of <laughs> blossoming. So until next week, I thank you. And I thank you, my audience, for being present, for being here. And until next week, God bless you. And may the universal light surround you. Thank you for being here want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. And if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click 